What are some of the most common but scariest scams that happen a lot? Let's find out. Starting with... Number six, Peggy Fulford. Peggy Ann Fulford, someone we've covered before, is a woman who's been convicted of defrauding several professional athletes, such as ex-NBA player Dennis Rodman and ex-NFL player Ricky Williams. She was released early from her 10-year prison sentence. Fulford, who posed as a financial advisor, served part of her sentence at a low-security federal prison in Alabama before being released to a halfway home program in Orlando, Florida. Fulford's activities targeted a variety of professional athletes, including Travis Best and Lex Hilliard. She claimed to have studied law and business at Harvard, bragging about her success on Wall Street through lucrative hospital deals and real estate investments in the Bahamas. Despite media reports revealing her educational background in engineering from Georgia Tech, Fulford convinced her victims that she was a trustworthy financial professional. The scheme involved promising to pay her victims' bills, file taxes, and make retirement investments on their behalf without any charges. In reality, Fulford gained access to their bank accounts over 14 years, embezzling money to fund her own lavish lifestyle, including purchases of cars, jewelry, airline tickets, and land. Fulford was arrested and pleaded guilty to one federal charge of interstate transportation of stolen property. She received the maximum sentence of 10 years behind bars and was ordered to pay over $5.7 million in restitution to her victims. Fulford's criminal activities extended beyond defrauding athletes. She also pleaded guilty to a Louisiana state charge of stealing $174,000 from a physician falsely claiming they would jointly buy and redevelop a historic, vacant New Orleans schoolhouse. She received an additional three-year prison sentence for this scheme to be served concurrently. Because of her high-profile victims, Fulford's case drew attention, and she was featured on CNBC's American Greed and BET's American Gangster, Trap Queens. Perhaps one of the more surprising parts of Fulford's story is the forgiveness extended to her by Ricky Williams. Right after, Williams' wife said Fulford literally took all of the money he earned in 11 NFL seasons. Williams said he realized that it's an unexpected attitude and that he may be delusional, but remarked that Fulford brought both good and bad into his life and expressed a desire to be on what he affectionately referred to as the Peggy train, which is honestly a refreshing attitude, if not the very least interesting. It's still sad that he rode the Peggy train to bankruptcy town. Be careful who you're trusting with your money. It's like the GPS in your car. It'll tell you how to get where you're going, but you can't let it drive for you or you'll end up in a lake. Number five, stranger danger. A family in San Jose, California fell victim to a con resulting in the theft of over $100,000 worth of jewelry. Ranuka Rajagopal and her husband Raj Pokalori became targets when four people, including one carrying a toddler, knocked on their door. Claiming to be interested in purchasing a dress from Furnuku, a popular Indian fashion designer known for her exclusive online appointments. But Ranuku let the strangers in, a decision she later regretted. A distraction action tactic unfolded as three women started asking Renuku a bunch of questions with the baby constantly crying, while two others carrying sling bags snuck in. Renuku admitted that it was kind of dumb to let the people in, but she was running a business from her house and a sale is a sale. Surveillance footage from the home shows the thieves making a quick exit, having stolen jewelry valued at over $100,000. It took the family several days to realize the extent of the theft and eventually they reported the incident to the police. The couple connected the dots when they saw a news report detailing a similar home invasion robbery involving an elderly couple who fell victim to the same distraction tactics. In that case, three women distracted the couple while stealing a family safe. The couple said they were pretty sure that the same suspects are responsible for both incidents. The San Jose Police Department's robbery unit and financial crimes unit are actively investigating the incidents, suspecting a potential link to a third case with similar characteristics. So it's understandable why Renuku would let these people into her home considering she's trying to make money. She's running a business, and if you've ever run a business, you know how difficult it is, so turning down a potential sale isn't a good idea. But when you're running a business from your home, or even if you're not, it's never a good idea to just let strangers in your house, no matter how nice they seem. Number four, the dog menace. 
Sean Dorr, a food delivery driver, faced a roughly 4,800-pound fine after attempting to deceive homeowners by claiming he was bitten by their friendly pet Labrador, Marley. Dorr alleged that Marley had not only damaged his car, but also caused injury to his arm. Dorr presented Marley's owners with a quote of 185 pounds for car scratch repairs and initiated a claim for injury compensation, seeking up to 3,000 pounds. But he was exposed when CCTV footage revealed a completely different scenario. Instead of a hostile encounter, the video captured Marley enthusiastically greeting Dorr with a wagging tail as he delivered a takeaway. Suspicions arose when the homeowner's insurance provider, AXA, reviewed the footage and found no evidence of the supposed hostile encounter. Medical examinations further disproved Dorr's claims of deep scratches inflicted by Marley. But Dorr was committed and tried to say the video evidence had been manipulated, a defense that didn't hold up in court. The court outright dismissed the claim and as a consequence, Dorr was ordered to pay the legal costs of Marley's owners, totaling roughly 4,800 pounds. The law firm Clyde & Company, acting on behalf of AXA, conducted the investigation into Dorr's fraudulent claim. Damien Rourke, a partner at Clyde & Company, pointed out the importance of surveillance technologies in exposing dishonest insurance claims. Dorr's inconsistencies, such as vanishing puncture marks, failure to seek medical attention, and a false claim of contacting the NHS 111 phone number, which is a non- emergency medical advice number in the UK, further contributed to the dismissal of his case. We're glad this guy got exposed, as we typically are for scammers who get caught. But no doubt, Marley is a good boy, and we all know what happens when dog bites are reported, which is all the more tragic. So this story has a happy ending, but because this guy wanted some cash, he was about to cost a good boy his life, which is just that much worse. Number 3. Booking Dot Scam People are facing a new scam employing sophisticated tactics to trick unsuspecting travelers into revealing sensitive information. People have been getting fraudulent emails, supposedly from Booking.com's email address, threatening to cancel their hotel reservations unless they confirm their payment details within 12 hours. The emails, which mimicked Booking.com's official communications, created a sense of urgency and pressured users to provide their bank card details. Some users have fallen victim to the scam, losing pretty large amounts of money, and the scam did stop with just emails. Scam notifications have also appeared on the Booking.com mobile app. One victim, a TikTok user named Nandini, shared her experience of being scammed out of 200 pounds. She got a message through the Booking.com app telling her to click a link to confirm her reservation. The fake message closely resembled the legitimate Booking.com interface, and the request for a card is pretty common when booking hotels. But it was a scam. Another user almost fell victim to a similar scam involving 2,000 pounds. Laura, who works in the tech industry, emphasized the cleverness of the approach, catching her off guard despite her familiarity with tech-related scams. Luckily, she delayed payment, finding the 12-hour notice odd, but was shocked at how slick this scam was. In response, Booking.com explained that some accommodation partners have been targeted by convincing and sophisticated phishing tactics. The scammers use these tactics to trick partners into clicking on malicious links or downloading harmful attachments, leading to unauthorized access to Booking.com accounts. The company assured users that it's not a breach of its back-end systems, but a coordinated effort by the scammers, which is a very corporate way of saying that it's an isolated incident and they're not at fault. Even though it's not isolated, and if they're being hacked, then they do need to do something about it. The scary part of this scam is the fact that it went through Booking.com's mobile app, which feels like it should be trustworthy. Your best bet would be simply call the hotel if you get one of these messages, and talk to the front desk directly. Scammers are getting more and more more sophisticated, so double check everything. Number two, the wire transfer. An Australian couple faced a legal battle of over $139,000 loss in a sophisticated scam involving the purchase of a Mercedes-Benz. Wendy Anglis and Derek Thompson fell victim to hackers who manipulated emailed invoices, altering the bank account number on a PDF sent by what they thought was the Mercedes-Benz dealership. The couple transferred $40,000 three times and $19,000 once to the phony account. In response, Wendy and Derek filed legal action against Mercedes 
Mercedes-Benz, alleging a breach of Australian consumer law. They argued that had they known the initial transfer was to an incorrect account, they would have taken steps to recover the payment. The couple said there was no way of distinguishing the manipulated invoice from a legitimate one. However, Mercedes-Benz launched a counterclaim, saying that the couple breached the purchase contract by not completing the transaction. The luxury car dealer demanded the payment of the scammed $139,000 and the surrender of a trade-in vehicle worth $17,292.47, part of the original deal. Mercedes-Benz acknowledges receiving four emails from the couple about the transfers, but didn't notify them of the issue until a week later. The car maker contends that it doesn't owe a duty of care to the couple and suggested that Wendy contributed to the problem by lacking adequate IT or password security. So what do you think? Who's at fault? The victims who fell prey to the fraudulent invoice or the luxury car dealer whose systems were allegedly compromised? What's the right thing to do here? The couple is out a massive amount of money and the dealership isn't just giving high-end luxury cars away for free. Tell us what you think in the comments below. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay tuned right here for our past release to find out how scary it is to have the people closest to you scam you. Number one, big bar tabs. An Australian business man named Puneet Singh Sodhi found himself in a financial nightmare after a work trip to Vietnam took an unsuspected turn. Sodhi, attempting to jumpstart his consultancy business in Ho Chi Minh City, got a bill of $43,000 for drinks while out with a client. The charges occurred over three nights at two bars, bottoms up and double shots. Bar names are so clever, aren't they? It's like if you own a bar or a salon, you have to have some weird punny name. Anyway, there the receipt showed purchases totaling roughly $20,000 at Bottoms Up and $25,000 at Double Shots for things like hookah, wine, and Red Bull. But the amount of items Sodi supposedly ordered seemed very unlikely, because even if he had consumed a fraction of the list of drinks, it would have been life-threatening. If you've ever had more than three Red Bulls in a day, you know what he's saying is true. Sodi immediately contacted American Express to dispute the bill, questioning why his card wasn't frozen during such suspicious transactions. He argued that scammers likely got his information during instances where bar staff took his credit card into a back room to process the bill. To make matters worse, the signed receipts presented to the Australian Financial Complaints Authority were deemed illegible scribbles bearing no resemblance to Sodi's actual signature. American Express defended its decision not to cancel the card, saying that a large value transaction alone doesn't necessarily signal fraud. They also said the transactions appeared legitimate, and this, coupled with Vietnam's uncommon practice of using pin codes for validation led to the oversight. Ultimately, Sodi successfully appealed the $43,000 bill, reducing the amount he owed to $3,300. Despite the financial setback, he expressed his intention to continue using American Express, pointing out his loyalty and the company's assistance during the dispute. Targeting travelers in various countries where unsuspecting tourists, often drunk, fall victim to scams is becoming increasingly common. And such incidents aren't limited to exotic destinations either. Even in familiar settings like clubs in Las Vegas, travelers can easily find themselves facing unexpected and unauthorized charges. And it's scary because it's not like Sodi did anything outright stupid. He opened a tab and paid his bills like he's supposed to, and he got scammed. It's not always feasible to go wherever your card goes at all times, but Sodi was smart for sticking with using his credit card instead of his actual bank card, since credit cards do offer more protection in these situations, and he was able to dispute it. Or do you think he was just putting up a big fight so he didn't get in trouble with his wife. What kind of bars were they anyway? Sounds like someone may have been up to some mischief. She wanted to help her expat friends in Dubai by helping them send money to their foreign bank accounts. But instead, she just kept the money. But she probably isn't the worst person to find to help you. That person may just be Gilbert Arena's assistant who stole close to seven million from him. The same thing happened to Kevin Hart. His personal assistant stole close to a million bucks from him. Number four, no laughing matter. Crime can happen to anyone. And that's what happened to Kevin Hart. From 2017 to 2019, Kevin Hart was defrauded out of nearly $1 million in unauthorized credit card charges. Crime can happen to anyone. And that's what happened to Kevin Hart. From 2017 to 2019, Kevin Hart was defrauded out of nearly $1 million in unauthorized credit card charges. The scammer was none other than Hart's personal shopper, Dylan Jason Sire, who is trusted with Hart's personal credit card to make purchases. 
Sire, a Long Island native, owned a personal shopper business in which he charged the actor's credit card with legitimate purchases, but the things he bought weren't always what Hart had in mind. Sire spent about $923,000 of Hart's money and an additional $240,000 on jewelry and watches from a luxury jeweler in California. He spent thousands on fine art and other collective items, including five Patek Philippe watches worth more than $400,000. He bought a Sam Friedman painting, 16 bare brick collector dolls, five cause collectible dolls, and two Louis Vuitton bags. He showed off many of these purchases on his personal Instagram page. Sire and Hart met in 2015 through his personal shopping business, Sire Consulting, LLC. He was hired to make several purchases for the actor and was given his personal credit card under the assumption that he would only make authorized purchases. By the time Hart uncovered the year and a half long scam, he was out more than $1 million. The cops kicked in his door to serve a search warrant in February 2021. They recovered about $250,000 worth of cash and goods. Sire was arraigned and charged with a laundry list of fraud and theft charges and potentially faces up to 25 years in prison. The Queens County District Attorney warned that no one, not even celebrities like Kevin Hart, are immune to scams. Number 3. Almost a Hilton Renata Shamrakova, the personal assistant to Nikki Hilton's ex-husband, spent nearly $1.6 million of his money on elite Amex on shopping sprees and exotic vacations. She conned Todd Meister while she worked for him at his Upper East Side townhouse in Manhattan. Neighbors started noticing piles of packages showing up at Renata's door. They were later discovered to contain high-end jewelry with expensive rings, necklaces, and bracelets. She also used his credit card to purchase airline tickets and fund her travel abroad. She covered her tracks by paying off the $800,000 credit card bill using Meister's JP Morgan checking account and transferring the funds to American Express. At the heart of the story, we have have Nikki Hilton, Todd Meister, and of course, Renata Shamrakova. Nikki Hilton is an American businesswoman, socialite, model, and fashion designer, but she's probably most known for being Paris Hilton's younger sister and fellow heir to the Hilton family fortune. Born into the wealthy Hilton family, she continued her streak of inherited wealth by marrying into the Rothschild family through James Rothschild in 2015. Paris was Nikki's maid of honor, and they honeymooned in Botswana after the wedding. Before that, Nikki married Todd Meister. He was a football star at the uppity Riverdale Country School before going on to Harvard to get a degree in business. Then, Todd started a company in the mid-90s dedicated to investing in internet startups. He sold the company in 2000 and started working as a hedge fund manager while still finding time to party. Meister was Nikki's longtime friend before they started dating on and off in 2003. Nikki was just a kid when she married Meister, but he treated her like gold and they had great chemistry. Her parents were thrilled about the wedding. The ceremony was held in August 2004 at a Las Vegas wedding chapel. Nikki wore an aqua blue silk dress and Meister donned a button-down shirt and pants. Paris witnessed the vows along with Bijou Phillips and comedian Jeff Beecher. But not everyone was convinced it would last. Meister's friends guessed it was a publicity stunt that would get annulled three days later. Unfortunately for the couple, he wasn't so far from the truth. The marriage was annulled three months later with a couple saying they got married on a whim. According to friends of the couple, they tried to give their marriage a fair shot, but it just wasn't meant to be. But while he was distracted being the newest member of the Hilton family, his personal assistant was stealing his Amex. Renata used his banking information to apply for an American Express credit card in his name and then added herself as a secondary user. In April 2011, the Ukrainian woman got too comfortable with her new boss and went on a wild spending spree. She sent the items to her apartment in Chelsea on 21st Street. Many of the purchases included pricey jewelry and exotic vacations. By the time her swindling days were over, she had stolen nearly $1 million from Meister. Unfortunately, Meister didn't notice the stolen funds for 10 months. He notified police in January 2012, and Renata was arrested four days later. She was charged with grand larceny, criminal possession of stolen property, identity theft, and forgery, and held on Rikers Island for a $100,000 bond. 
Her parents even tried to sell their home to help their daughter avoid jail. Renata also started a social media campaign to pay back the money she owed to Meister, but it was less than successful, raising a grand total of $335. She took the stand at the Manhattan Supreme Court in December 2013, where she pleaded guilty to felony grand larceny. She was sentenced up to three years behind bars. The defense team requested that she stay at Rikers Island, but the judge denied this motion and sent her to a prison in upstate New York. Number 2. Play Money Ex-NBA star Gilbert Arenas found out, out of the blue, that his trusted personal assistant, John A. White, scammed him out of roughly $7 million in Arenas' estimation. However, on court docs, Arenas could only prove around $2.1 million. Arenas only found out when he started noticing discrepancies in one of his bank accounts where he would have what he called a play money bank account. White had given himself unauthorized access to this specific play money bank account that Arenas used basically as a petty cash account. Whenever Gilbert needed, for example, $20,000 for a weekend trip to Miami, Arenas would have White call up Arenas' money manager and have him transfer the money to Gilbert's play money bank account. Then the money would be in there for Arenas to use. But White went on and abused this power by telling Arenas' money manager that Arenas would need money for a made-up purchase. And as soon as that money would touch the play money account, White would transfer that money into his own bank account. So Arenas would never see the discrepancy in the balance. And the money manager would never follow up with Arenas since White was his personal assistant. At the height of Arenas' career, Arenas' assistant was stealing millions of dollars by transferring money from Arenas' bank account into his own. He spent the money on a home in Florida, a Ferrari, and a Range Rover. White was found guilty and sentenced to 57 months in federal prison and two years of supervised release. The judge banned him from opening or using any credit cards without his probation officer's permission. White asked for a retrial when new evidence emerged that could change his guilty conviction. Many witnesses came forward with statements that Arenas was aware of the big transactions White was making on his behalf. White also found signed forms from the bank showing that Arenas was fully aware of these transactions. People close to Arenas came forward to say that the NBA star was known to spend carelessly like when he bought a home for one of his girlfriends in Florida. The scammer accused Arenas of lying when he said White wasn't authorized to make these big purchases. Then there are Arenas' Instagram posts that seem to brag about defrauding American Express by not paying his tab at a gentleman's club. Still, the judge wasn't convinced. He rejected White's request for a retrial, saying this new evidence didn't suggest innocence and wasn't relevant to the criminal case. Number 1. Forex Fun Katie Blaymeyer moved to the United Arab Emirates in 2011 to start working as a physical education teacher at an international school where she taught a British curriculum. She was born and raised in Lancashire, England, but moved after her mother died in 2008. When her five-year contract ended at the international school in UAE, Blaymeyer started doing private swimming lessons for the children of wealthy locals in their personal pools. Then, she got a Facebook message that invited her into a life of crime. Someone asked her if she was looking for work, hoping she would be able to swap their Emirati dirhams for another currency at a better rate than what the banks offer. At first, it didn't seem to be a problem. Blaymeyer, a staple in the Dubai party scene, did these currency exchanges for a while. A driver picked up the sender's money and brought it to Blaymeyer. Then she'd exchange it for cash in her British bank account. She offered reasonable rates and there weren't any problems until things snowballed and went totally wrong. During the pandemic, she saw the opportunity to rip off many ex Expats, especially Emirates airline crew members and pilots who had been laid off and were desperate for better exchange rates. She used fake names like Emogen Smith and Don Smith to lure them in. Her clients thought she was genuine until they realized their money wasn't being returned. One businessman, Mr. Osman, said he lost 42,000 pounds to Blaymeyer after using her services to expand his kebab business. She told him she was pregnant and wanted to get rid of her dram so she could return to her husband in the UK. A win-win for them both. But then she disappeared. Osman spent two stressful, sleepless weeks trying to get in touch with her. When he confided in some friends, they told him that Blaymeyer had a reputation for scams. An Australian air hostess lost 6,500 pounds after trying to send money back home to put a deposit 
deposit down on a house. A Spanish pilot said he lost 22,000 pounds trying to send money home to pay for his father's funeral. He saw Blay Myers post in an airline Facebook group and assumed she worked in the industry. He trusted her. The deal was supposed to save him 250 pounds in bank fees, but the money never arrived in his account in Madrid. Blay Meyer met his wife and kids and was friendly to the whole family. The pilot never knew she was capable of such heartlessness. She also scammed a British pilot out of 50,000 pounds, a Belgian cabin crew member out of 20,000 pounds, and a French airline worker out of 18,000 pounds. WhatsApp messages show the dozens of excuses she used to explain why the victims never received their money. A Dubai resident sent her 28,000 pounds as an investor to develop a food ordering app. Blay Meyer spent 2,000 pounds on software development but never developed the app. The investors never saw his money. When victims tried to get their money back, Blay Meyer threatened them. She wasn't allowed to leave Lancashire until she paid back the debts owed to her swimming class business partner, Alex Campbell, who took her to court after he invested 15,000 pounds in her company, Float UAE, in exchange for a job. When Campbell tried to cash a security check for his investment, it bounced. At least 20 people filed complaints with the police, and Blay Meyer was arrested and jailed on Christmas Eve 2019. After a civil court case, a travel ban was placed, preventing Blay Meyer from leaving Dubai. The court instated a repayment plan and put her on the no-fly list. She was released from jail after repaying the debt that caused a previous check to bounce. Meanwhile, she blamed multiple people up the chain of command for all the money that had mysteriously vanished and denied that she was operating a scam. She said she used 100,000 pounds of her personal savings to repay some victims, leaving eight victims who owed a total of 80,000 pounds. According to Blameyer, she's the real victim here, saying she's been blackmailed and received death threats. Sometimes she even blamed the bank for the mix-ups that caused her to serve jail time. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you'd rather have. The ability to rewind time by one hour, giving you the chance to correct any mistake or relive a moment, or would you choose the power to foresee the outcome of any decision you make?